seem to live in a world that loves to celebrate the wunderkinds. A wunderkind, according to Webster's Dictionary, is a wonder child or child prodigy, or a person who succeeds, especially in business, at a comparatively early age. I've lost count of how many 30 under 30, 20 under 20, youngest millionaires and billionaires lists are out there. This emphasis on youth and early achievement is so prevalent in our society that it's hard not to have some kind of complex about being behind. I want to say up front that this video is not intended to be at all disrespectful to early bloomers. Success and achievement at any stage deserves to be acknowledged and celebrated. That being said, we already live in a culture that is hyper-focused on early achievement. And late bloomers, as a result, are often overlooked, or worse, considered less than. So the main intention of this video is not to criticize early bloomers or get too deep into criticizing our culture for any toxic elements that all of this pushing early success is having on our society. Rather, this video is to give love and hopefully provide some perspective to my fellow late bloomers who may have already spent significant chunks of their lives feeling behind or somehow defective. There are so many upsides to being a late bloomer that just don't get celebrated enough. I've decided to split this video into two parts. So this is part one of my little contribution to help change that. Generally speaking, Wunderkinds probably experience a very high pressure to constantly live up to their genius expectations. And those expectations get instilled from an early age. This has the potential to leave deep imprints on a developing brain. Sure, Wunderkinds can reap all kinds of benefits that come along with this status. But what if that pressure was all you knew? To have that level of expectation and adoration for your accomplishments instilled in you from such an early age that you didn't know anything else. I imagine that maintaining that level of pressure and performance can lead to some really poor mental and physical health. And in some extreme cases, we've even seen some people resort to criminal activity. Criminal activities aside, there are wunderkinds out there that are terrified of even trying something different or hard simply because they don't want to have their identities associated with anything resembling failure or mediocrity. In Rich Carlgard's book, Late Bloomers, The Power of Patience in a World Obsessed with Early Achievement, he provides an anecdote where a 10th grade girl in an international baccalaureate program expresses a desire to try new things and hard things, but she's terrified of not doing well and messing up her hard-earned GPA. But as the author says, if you can't try something new in the 10th grade, when can you? On the flip side of this, Sarah Blakely, the now billionaire founder of the OG shapewear company Spanx, fondly talks about in her masterclass how her dad used to ask her and her brother at the dinner table, so what did you fail at this week? If she didn't have something to tell him, he would legitimately be disappointed. But if she tried something and did horribly, he would high five her and say, way to go. He completely redefined failure for her. So that it meant it wasn't about the outcome. It was about not trying. This encouraged Sarah to explore and take chances from an early age which I think is just wonderful. 
Even though it may be painful to be dismissed or even put down for not being an early bloomer, there's less expectations placed upon us, especially the older we get. Um, at any age, if you can see this lack of pressure and expectation as an opportunity rather than as validation that we are failures, um, this can provide the freedom to explore and be brave and take chances. In my humble opinion, if you are doing life correctly, your life should constantly be including failures. The hope is you are failing often, but better. Failing up, as one might say. And an upside to blooming late is that you get to commit more early failures quietly. Your risks and mistakes get to fly under the radar when nobody's paying attention to you. There's a freedom in that if you take advantage of it. Or another benefit of late blooming is that maybe at this point you won't even care if people see your failures because when it comes to failures, many people realize as they get older that they're not actually life crushing. The more we experience and endure throughout our lives, the more opportunities we have to build resilience. And the more resilient you are, the higher the likelihood that you won't feel like your world is literally ending when something goes wrong. For a lot of people, life experience grounds them and gives them a broader perspective. The more you live and the more you do, the greater sense you get of what's important and what's not. The urge to keep up with the Joneses or believe in your own hype probably won't be as strong as they would be if you were conditioned to focus on extrinsic motivations like adoration from others from an early age. Also, you may be a little more humble. Time and failure are excellent reminders that the world does not revolve around us, whether it's in regards to our failures or our successes. All right, that's it for part one. Thank you for watching and I will see you in part two. Bye.